Hello, my name is Andrew Von Weber. I'm here with Brent Oakley. And you're watching YCTV. Today we're doing a career corner and we're going to talk about sound. So, what is your job? My job, uh, I handle all the audio for the band that if you go to a show, that you hear when you walk into the room. This is where I work. I'm the front of house engineer for the band, which means I mix all of the instruments that come into this. This item here we can call the sound desk, the console, the mixing board. I usually call it either the console or the desk. And everything that happens on stage will come into this desk and I, it's my job to handle it and make sure that it comes out of the speakers as close to the CD sound or whatever you downloaded from iTunes, as close to that sound as it can. Okay. So, did you bring the desk yourself or was it provided for you? No, this was actually rented locally. There's a company here in South Korea who, uh, who provided all of the audio, audio and lighting that you see in the room today. And this was something that I requested that they were able to satisfy. All right, so you normally work with a multitude of soundboards. I do. I've worked with with probably I don't know I don't know if there's hundreds, but I've worked with just about every analog and digital desk that you would find in this kind of environment. But this one right here is the one that I use the most. Which do you prefer, analog or digital? I tend to like digital just because it's easy. Everything that I do, for example, today during our sound check, is all saved on a little thumb drive and all that information can be loaded then for the next show so I save all of that time the next time that I have to set up. If I had an analog desk then I have to start from scratch uh, each day. Man. So wait, so you do multiple gigs, does that mean do. you do multiple bands as well? I do, I work for different artists all of the time, I've worked for, I've probably worked for hundreds of artists over, over the course of the, the 10 years that I've been doing this. You mean for 10 years? I've been doing this for 10 years. Yeah. <sighs> That's so cool. I, <laughs> yeah. So you've worked most, so you've worked across the world as well, I'm assuming. I have. I've traveled a lot doing this job. I've actually been to every US state, every major city in the US. I've been to at least 60 different countries outside of the US, South Korea being one of them. So which is your favorite soundboard, soundboard to work with? Um, the one, like again, uh, this one right here that we have today, this is very easy to get wherever we travel to. It's called the Venue Profile, mm -hmm. and uh, it, because it's so consistent, because I can get it anywhere that I go, anywhere in the U.S. or outside of the U.S., this is the one that I typically request. Okay. So, people may wonder, what is it like to work with a musician? Working with, with a musician can be difficult. At least uh, in the audio end, I kind of have a little bit of space. You can see how far away we are from stage, so I don't have to interact with the artist as much as their tour manager would have to. Uh, but it, it, it's good. As long as you have good players, that's going to make the sound even better because good sound starts at the source. So you, if you have good guys on stage playing good music, very skilled and talented, it's going to make my job a lot easier. If they're not that good, I can only polish it so yeah. much. So. You had to get formal training, right? Or is it kind of like natural talent kind of? Well, you don't have to. It helps. It kind of adds credibility to the job. I did go to a school that specializes in audio engineering in Nashville, Tennessee back in 2004 is when I uh -huh. completed that. Um, but some guys don't do that and, you, and it's not a requirement. This, this industry is unique and it's very much about networking. And if you know the right people and you know how to do a certain job that's needed, then you'll have work usually just from a phone call or an email. So for people who may be watching, if you start off small, you'll, mm -hmm. it, that's where most people start off, right? And yeah, you've got to start somewhere. You've got to learn to crawl before you can run. And just in that same analogy, when I first started, I worked at a venue and I just made coffee in the coffee bar. And then I, and then I started working in a small stage they had in the corner room that was just for karaoke. And then I moved down to the bigger stage, where, which was only for one or 200 people. And then I ended up mixing in their main room, which was for a couple thousand people. And mm -hmm. I went from there to the road and I've been touring ever since. Okay. Um. Just for the people watching, do you have any like tips or anything like advice for them? Sure, if this is something that you're interested in doing, the best way to do it is to just experiment. If you play music, that's easy because you can record yourself at home on your laptop or your computer and you can you can uh, experiment with the way that EQ, compression, effects, all of those things 
uh, you can experiment to see what kind of sound they produce. So if you cut frequencies or if you boost frequencies, then you learn what kind of an effect that has on that. So you know if you ever end up in a live environment, oh, if this is too bright, I can cut these frequencies. It's just a learning process. That's, that's how I did it. I started recording at home just for fun as a hobby. And later on in life, as I got older, I went to a school for it to kind of perfect that. So wait, what runs through your head as you do this live? What goes through my head, uh, if you look on here, you'll see all these different inputs and everything from the drums to all the different guitars to all the different vocals. And as soon as each one of these comes through, when we start a line check or a sound check, typically you'll do a line check first. You have each instrument come through the desk one at a time by itself. And as a good engineer, you should know what that instrument is supposed to sound like. So you've got that idea in your head and then you, you hear what it actually sounds like in the room and that's when all of your EQ and compression and panning, all of those uh, capabilities come into play for you to adjust that until it sounds like how it should sound, like you, what you recall it here. And like in school, we actually did something called golden ears where we had to listen to different frequencies and identify those frequencies to the point where, where you can just know what a frequency is. You hear a sound and you say, oh, that's 5K, or oh, that's 1K, or that's 200 hertz. So you, you, you can identify that. But So when you hear an instrument come through, like the kick drum, for example, it'll sound one way. You know you want it to sound another way, so you adjust it until it sounds the way that you know it's supposed to sound. Thank you for joining us on YCTV. See you again.